Hey guys, Nick Lilia here taking another look at uh, what's going on for tomorrow into the afternoon as we're looking at the opportunity for some severe weather uh, across the area. Now, you might be wondering, Nick, you just gestured to the picture behind you that looks nothing like the Southern Plains. You're right. Actually, right now we're looking out into the Pacific Ocean. We've got Oregon, California, Washington, and uh, you know, you see this big swirl up here in the clouds right there. That is the next guy that we're worried about uh, across the Southern Plains. In fact, if this guy slides across the northern tier, it's going to hook up with a little low that's hanging off the coast of California. That's going to push its way off uh, to the east as well. And you can kind of barely make out parts of Kansas, the Oklahoma Panhandle, and uh, parts of West Texas on here. And, uh, well, as they move our direction, uh, well, we're going to spark up some showers and thunderstorms and some severe weather across the high plains. Uh, because of that, the SPC, of course, for today, I'm going to lean back. Uh, for today, you know, not much happening. Uh, you know, a couple of showers and thunderstorms in eastern New Mexico, but it's uh, tomorrow that we are concerned about that slight risk. That's where the SPC's got us for tomorrow. Parts of Kansas, Oklahoma, even into Nebraska, the Texas Panhandle, and uh, parts of West Texas. You can get a kind of better look in here. They've got us hatched, and what this hatched area means is that you're at an extra 10% risk of seeing enhanced severe weather. So not only are you in between a 5, 15, and 30% chance of seeing severe weather, but then you've got another 10% chance on top of that that you see exceptionally severe conditions. And, uh, well, as we move through about the next 24 hours, that's going to be the case. So as we take it over to twisterdata.com, nice enough to uh, uh, let them or let us use their data, we're going to start off looking at 0Z. So this is the 12Z model of the NAM, and we're looking at 0Z on Thursday. 0Z on Thursday, which is actually Wednesday evening, about 6, 7, 8 o'clock or so. And just to make sure that I've set this up correctly, we're going to double check. There we are, 0Z on Thursday. We'll slide it back down and get ourselves into position again. Right, now, there we go. Now, what are we looking at here? We're looking at uh, 200 or 300 millibars up in the atmosphere, and what we're looking for is the spreading of these isobars. And, uh, well, we're going to have that. There's one there, there's one there, and there's one there. And notice how back further off to the west, they're a little closer together. As you head out to the east, they're a little further apart. It's that spreading in the atmosphere that we're really looking for on the back side of the shortwave ridge for the opportunity for a couple of showers and thunderstorms as you open up the atmosphere above the idea is is you want to fill that void for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction if you open up the atmosphere you lower the pressure something is going to come in there and fill that void you'd hope and as we take a look at the uh, 700 well 700 millibars we're looking at vertical velocity here and uh, where you see the brighter colors that's where you see more vertical velocity, and uh, well, we've got that. In fact, uh, across parts of uh, we'll call it the southeast Texas Panhandle, and as you make your way into parts of Kansas and Nebraska as well, and that's where we're looking. Again, that's that's where the SPC was talking about. There's that slight risk there, and as we bring it back to the 700, and there's where we're going to have the most vertical velocity at about 700 millibars or so. So. How much instability are we talking about? How much warm air is sitting underneath cold air? Of course, warm air rises, and when it does, and it moves into that cold air, it'll take all that moisture that it has with it, it'll rise up, cool, condense, that's how you get clouds. How much instability are we looking at? Well, when you've got the greens out there, you're looking at anywhere between about 500 joules per kilogram all the way up to about 1,500 or so. It's when you get into the oranges that you get into 2,000, 2,500, eventually once you get into the reds on twisterdata.com, you eventually get into kind of 3,000, 4,000. So for tomorrow, this is where things get very interesting. Now, uh, recall where the, I'm going to circle this area again, and instead I'm going to make kind of a bigger circle here of where we're looking at the most vertical velocity at 700 millibars. Then I'm going to leave that circle there, and we're going to have some fun. We're going to look at where the greatest cape is, and that's in the southeastern Texas panhandle, the same place where we had that mo the most vertical velocity. Okay, we're going to circle that as well. We're going to have some fun here. 
We're going to have a lot of lines on the screen here coming up in a little bit. So, that's CAPE, joules per kilogram. All you have to remember with CAPE, if you're an interested party here, is just how big is the number. Once you get above about a thousand or so, you've got the possibility to get some stronger thunderstorms. Now, we're going to take it over and look at helicity. This is how much torque we can get in the atmosphere, how much spin we have out there as we move up in the atmosphere. We're working with shear as well, but how much torque, how much spin do we have uh, to these updrafts? And we're going to leave this same area circled. We're going to make a different circle on here, though. Instead, we're going to find the darker colors here, which are across the northeastern Texas panhandle, parts of the Oklahoma panhandle, and parts of southwestern Kansas. So we're going to make another circle on here. There it is, right there. It's starting to look like an amoeba, but that's okay. Now, now that we've looked at helicity, and again, for this, Greens, we're talking about about 150 or so as we get past the yellows, 150 to 175. After we get into the reds, we're talking about 300. Oftentimes, when you're talking about holicity, you want values up over 300 if you're going to be talking about possibly tornadic or big hailers inside some of these supercells. All right, we're going to click it across again. Now, what we're looking at here is EHI. Now, this is just CAPE times holicity, and then you're just going to divide it by 160,000. Don't worry about the math. The important thing is we're taking one, we're multiplying it by the other, we're dividing it by 160,000, and this will give you a good idea of where, where the stronger thunderstorms will most likely develop, because not only do they have the cape, but they got the holicity. You need both of those, good rotating updraft, to get these good solid hailers or tornadic thunderstorms if you're headed out chasing or if you're watching this at home if you're just trying to prepare for tomorrow what weather am I going to see well here we are remember we've we've left these two areas circled we've got the big circle 700 millibars the little circle down here was cake the little circle up here was helicity but notice the EHI when you when you take the two slap them together what do you get well you get a larger area in here that is up over two to three. We're going to circle it again. I know we've got a lot of circles on here, but that's your EHI. That's the highest area of EHI. Now we're going to take it over and look at mixed layer LCL height. Now this is the, the base layer of the clouds. Oftentimes when you're talking about getting a tornado, you want LCLs, MLLCLs, mixed layer LCLs, down around a thousand or lower. What are we looking at? Well, Again, we've got our circles on here, and it's tough to see because of the red, but as you look back behind me on the, uh, the legend, we're not going to have that. In fact, uh, basically across the entire area, until you get into parts of uh, western Nebraska, or eastern Nebraska, I should say, eastern Kansas and uh, central Oklahoma, you're looking at uh, ML LCL heights up over 1,000. That doesn't do you any good if you're trying to tornado chase. The good news is, if you're not trying to tornado chase, you don't have to worry as much about a tornado. It doesn't mean it can't happen. It means it's a little more difficult to have that happen. Now, let's take it over and take a look at the lifted index. Now, this is how much oomph we have to get these parcels aloft, how these parcels of air, that's what we call them in weather, a little parcel of air, how are, we, how are we gonna get it up? And a lot of times, when you look at this, you're looking for more negative numbers, numbers that are more negative. You wanna get down below negative four, negative five, negative six. If you get towards negative seven, eight, and nine, you're doing pretty good. You've got a pretty good lifted index there. If you took a racquetball out one day and you had a lifted index of negative nine, you threw it up high enough. Okay, so it wouldn't stay in the air, but it would be a fun experiment. But as we look at this, you've got the darker shades of orange in there. That's negative seven, and you're doing pretty good. And I'm gonna make another circle on here of where that negative seven is. We got one right there. I'm just going to kind of cut that guy off. And then we've got another one up here. And again, we've got, a lot of, we've got a lot of circles in here. Remember, 700, CAPE, Helicity, EHI. And now we're talking about lifted index in here. And we're going to take it over. And now we're looking at composite reflectivity. This is basically what the NAM, 12Z NAM, at 0Z on Thursday, so 7 o'clock or so on Wednesday night, suggests where we're going to have precipitation. And you can take all of these lines, and once you lay it on top of the map like this, it'll give you a good idea 
of where you're going to be looking at severe weather, not only dynamically in the atmosphere, but once you take what they call the QPF, so to speak, once you take a look at the radar, where does the model suggest there are actually going to be rain showers? Well, it's down off in the southeastern Texas panhandle and draped back off to the north and east through parts of central Oklahoma and into Kansas. So you can take all this information and you can probably guess that the southeastern Texas panhandle, if you're a storm chaser out there, is going to be the place to be. If you're just watching this at home and you just wanted some more education or you wanted a better look at the forecast, the southeastern Texas panhandle is not where you want it to be tomorrow. And in fact, as we move through the next 24 hours, I really do think that southeastern Texas panhandle, the northeastern Texas panhandle, parts of the Oklahoma panhandle, and into parts of west and central Kansas are going to be the places that are going to be hardest hit by this severe weather. Now, this is just one model. Keep that in mind. We look at a handful of them down here to make sure that we know what's happening. But take a look at this as well. We're going to take it over to the Texas Tech Wharf. No, not the character from Star Trek. It's the wharf. It's a, it's a weather model, folks. I'm going to take off all of our circles that we made because they don't matter anymore, but I want you to take a quick look at the radar back behind me here, and I'm going to circle this guy up, but notice in that same area where we're concerned about severe weather, that's also where we have the most development on a different model as well. So the closer you get, a lot of these models tend to come together and give you a better idea of what ha what's happening. And there's that same area that we were just talking about, granted on a different map, so it's going to be on a different place on the TV here on the screen, but it's that same area, the southeastern Texas panhandle, parts of western Oklahoma, the eastern Texas panhandle, parts of the Oklahoma panhandle, and back in to parts of south and central Kansas. So, hopefully that gives you a better idea of what we're looking at over the next 24 hours. And again, we're talking about the opportunity for severe weather Wednesday afternoon in parts of west Texas. The, Texas, the Eastern Texas Panhandle, Western Oklahoma, the Oklahoma Panhandle, Western and Central Kansas. So keep that in mind if that's where you're watching us today.